It's one thing to assume there are animals that are still out there to be discovered, and another to assert that these things are covered up by conspiracy such as living dinosaurs or aliens like E.T. In the upcoming days, I'll be uploading my videos on six cryptids of choice, explaining and debunking them in an objective manner. For those of you who don't know, cryptids are the animals studied by cryptozoologists. They're animals that haven't been confirmed by science yet. Today, let's take a look at the Lake Champlain monster known as Champ. Champ is supposedly a living plesiosaur, which is an extinct marine reptile that lived alongside the dinosaurs. It wasn't a dinosaur, however, but that's a video for another day. He, or she, or them, depending on what you choose to believe about it, is said to live in Lake Champlain. That's a large freshwater lake between New York, Vermont, and Canada. Because plesiosaurs have been extinct for 65 million years, an undeniable fact, I'm really skeptical that there could possibly be one living today. Thousands of people, dating all the way back to the Abenaki Indians, claim to have seen this creature. Actually, if we take a look at Abenaki mythology, we see that the name of the serpent is Pita Skog, which means the Grand Snake. It's a horned serpent akin to the Orphic Ophion, or Egyptian Apep, or Apophis. Pita Skog is said to fight the Padogeic, thunder and lightning spirits. The Abenaki were clearly describing something supernatural, not something physical. The first recorded sighting took place when Samuel de Champlain came upon the lake in July 1609. During this expedition, the French explorer noted in his journal these words, a 20-foot serpent with a horse-shaped head and a body as thick as a keg. Luckily for us, Samuel de Champlain recorded his discovery of Lake Champlain, and it survives to this day. What does he have to say about wildlife? Well, he describes an abundance of wildlife, including fowl, stags, deer, bears, and beavers. According to Champlain, the largest fish of Lake Champlain are called the Chow Faru. In his description, he states it, quote, varies in length, the largest being, as the people told me, 8 or 10 feet long. I saw some 5 feet long, which were as large as my thigh the head being as big as my two fists with a snout two and a half feet long and a double row of very sharp and dangerous teeth. If anything, it shows how dishonest the description of Champ given is. This is the closest we get to De Champlain describing a large aquatic animal and it's not a plesiosaur. What plesiosaur has a snout equal to half the length of its body? None as far as anyone knows. But the long nose guard does, the largest of which in Lake Champlain has been recorded at nearly 19 pounds. Makes more sense to me that Champlain was describing a gar, not a plesiosaur. The most famous of the Champ encounters was in 1977 by a woman named Sandy Mancy and her family. She took this photo and watched the creature for more than 10 minutes. In an interview, she stated, I know that what I saw was a dinosaur. It's great that she took a picture because science has consistently proven that eyewitness testimony is the least reliable form of evidence. It's susceptible to memory, bias, and tricks of the mind, all of which can throw an investigation off course and it's not the fault of the witness. But there's better ways to prove your case. So what Sandra Mancy saw in 1977 could be dismissed if she hadn't taken a photograph, but she did, so let's take a look at it. Ben Radford of the Committee for Skeptical Inquiry actually performed an experiment to determine the size of the animal. He used a three-foot scale marker divided into equal one-foot long sections. He placed it 150 feet into Lake Champlain and took a picture of it from 8 feet above water level. Using a Kodiak Instamatic Fixed Focus 110, the same camera and size estimates given by Mansi herself. The exact height of one foot at that distance was measured and then scaled to the original Mansi photograph. The results are <gasps> shocking. Champ is only three feet out of water and a mere seven feet across. Pretty small and puny for a plesiosaur if you ask me. Of course, these are based on Mansi's estimates. Once again, this is all eyewitness testimony and is susceptible to opinion, bias, and memory. Still, this is the closest we can get to an actual size and it's more than likely what we're seeing here is far from a plesiosaur. 
There's no reason at this point to believe it was anything other than a twisted log, and the Mansi case is simply a case of honest misidentification. As this is the best case for the evidence of Champ, I won't even bother with the numerous other examples anyone may provide. Instead, I'll provide answers that actually fit Occam's razor. The first and most likely explanation in my opinion are called seiches, standing waves which oscillate back and forth in a manner similar to the reported movements of Champ and other sea monsters such as Nessie and Caddy and Ogopogo. Many people won't even realize seiches are occurring and can confuse them for sea serpents or other animals as debris or plants from the water are moved to the top during the movement. Also, who's to say that Champ isn't a piece of floating debris like driftwood simply causing mass hysteria. There's also the second most likely explanation in my opinion that Champ is the misidentification of a living animal. Remember when we found out that De Champlain was describing a gar and not a sea monster? It's possible that people today are seeing gars or other large fish as well. Look at these big ass fish. If you weren't prepared to meet one or were simply a tourist, wouldn't you not know how to identify this? How about sturgeon, which are massive and ancient, true relics of the dinosaur age? I'll conclude this with the sheer impossibility of there being a champ. Firstly, what are the chances that plesiosaurs, or any dinosaurs besides birds, survived into modern times? There's no evidence they existed during the Cenozoic era, which leaves a 65 million year gap that nobody can explain unless they went extinct. There's no evidence that they existed in historic times either, but that already has a video. Why assume any of these animals are still alive? There should also be at least some scientists recording high quality pictures, or some carcass and DNA evidence as well of these animals. There must also be a multitude of them as well as descriptions vary in size, color, and even in obvious features such as horns and fins, reminiscent of swimming beer if you ask me. So, what is Champ? Like most cryptids, it's probably a combination of mass hysteria, innocent people who can't explain what they're seeing, natural phenomena, and of course, a fair share of hoaxes.